Have you ever wondered about the best way to start implementing data flows in your reporting environment? I reckon the most impactful query or table you can share within your company is a calendar table. It could be implemented in any organization, irrelevant of its size, and it's one of the best practices that you will find anywhere about data flows. We all need a date table to create reliable time intelligence measures in Power BI, so creating a single, reusable, and organization-wide approved calendar could be the most significant step to a self-serve BI environment. In today's video, I show you one way of creating a flexible, parameterized calendar and financial calendar table in Power Query Online and explain how to share and promote the data flow for easier discoverability for those who just want to use a calendar in Power BI. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. As you probably know, Dataflow is all about reusing data. Not just any kind of data, but data that's already in a shape that's ready to be used. Data flows are usually created by more advanced report developers and shared within the wider department or the business group. A perfect example of a data flow could be a calendar table. Let's say one where other devs can find regular dates and financial dates. All of these based on an agreed date structure. For example, if your organization uses a 454 week calendar, which is usually a bit funkier than a regular calendar, report creators can easily rely on the master date table and the reports that they create won't deviate from that structure. This is really important in keeping everything in line when it comes to reporting. But enough of me talking, let's hop over to Power Query Online and start building our date table. I consider myself super lazy, so the calendar table we are going to create now has three parameters and a calculated query. Let's quickly create the three parameters. One for the start date, which in this example is going to be 1st of January 2020. Then a second one for the end of the calendar table, let's go with 31st of December 2022. And lastly, a parameter for the month when the financial year starts. In Australia it is July, so I'm going to use 7. After these parameters, I create a calculation for the number of days between the start date and the end date. I only need this calculation because of the M code I like to use to generate dates. All of this allows flexibility in the creation of the date table and lets other, more advanced developers to easily expand or reduce the length of the calendar table by using the JSON file of this data flow. They can quickly fine tune start and end date, or even the month when the new financial year kicks in. Also, it means that I and others only need to create a single date table, saving lots of development time. Let's quickly group these under calendar parameters and start building the M-based date table. As I mentioned before, I use the list.datesm code with the calendar start and number of days parameter. This creates a full list of dates between 1st of January 2020 and 31st of December 2022, exactly what we need in a calendar table. After that, it's just a matter of utilizing the GUI of Power Query Online to convert to a table add the proper name to the column and change the type to date. And voila, now I have a complete date list. To create a standard bilingual analytics calendar table, I need to add a few more fields, but almost all of them could be added using the features under add column on the ribbon. I'm going to skip to the part where I have these fields ready. If you look at the applied steps, you can see that there are only two steps where I manually inserted details. One for the QTR column, I like to see the letter Q in front of the quarter of the year, and the last column, which is a day of week, that ensures my week starts on a Monday. Once again, these are just personal preferences, but at Bilingual Analytics, that's how we roll. To help you to jumpstart your data flow calendar table creation, I'll add these M codes to the blog post, so be sure to check out that site as well. Now. We could stop here and just utilize the regular calendar table, but I promised the financial calendar as well. So let's head back to my data flow and quickly create that one as well. 
I'm going to duplicate my calendar table as the base should be the same, but let's remove all the inserted fields. As I mentioned before, in Australia, financial year starts on the 1st of July, meaning that the financial calendar is shifted by six months compared to a regular calendar. So I just add the column using the date at the month M code. If I'm not mistaken, Matt Allington over at Accelerator BI showed me this nifty trick. I'm using this way of switching calendars ever since. Once we have a financial base date, I can add the same fields that I have added previously, but using the fin date column. Let's skip the boring part. Bilingual Analytics financial calendar is not as wide as a regular calendar, but once again, this is a standard, company-wide approved financial date structure. Using this table will ensure that reports that are generated using financial figures are accurately reported against the right financial month and year. While in this example, I have the regular calendar and the financial calendar split into two queries, in real life, you can easily create a single query to contain both. Based on my experience, however, developers either create reports based on a regular calendar or a financial calendar. So why would you import fields that are not relevant to our report? Of course, you can remove columns in Power BI Desktop, but what's the point of having a ready-to-use calendar table if report creators need to remove fields? But I digress. So the last step in creating a standard calendar data flow is to promote it within the organization. It does help a lot to allow discoverability so others can easily find, and more importantly, use these calendars. Let me show you how to do it. Hit save and close on the data flow. Name it as Bilingual Analytics Standard Calendar. Then refresh it to load data into it. Then head back to the workspace and click on the three dots or more options and settings. This is the part where I talk about how to promote or certify your data flow. However, after recording this bit on the service, I had to realize that we cannot really endorse the data flow, simply because that make discoverable button is not there, or at least not at the recording of this video. I had a chat with Microsoft and they confirmed that while the endorsement buttons are visible under settings, without being able to enable discoverability, the promoted or certified icons won't show up in desktop. Once it is fixed, the next part of this video will make much more sense. Under the endorsement options, select either promoted or certify and hit apply. It may take a while for this to happen, but once it is fully synced, your developers are going to see something like this in Power BI Desktop. Under the Get Data from Data Flows option, the calendar table or calendar data flow is now flagged as promoted or certified. It does a great job of highlighting centrally created tables. Alrighty, so let's do a quick recap. Our goal was to create a standard and centralized calendar table for all report creators within Bilingual Analytics. The tool we choose to use is Dataflow. It does a great job with data reusability. I, a more senior developer, created a regular and a financial calendar table in line with the company's date structure. It spans across three years with lots of additional information such as month name, week of year, and so on. Once these tables were ready, I promoted the data flow to ensure that others could easily locate and identify that these tables are approved to be used in reporting. I believe creating these date tables does not require a lot of development resources, but it has a huge potential to provide a much smoother report creation experience. Not only that, but it does help a lot with that single source of mindset that we all need when it comes to analytics. Now it's time for me to ask the question of the day. Do you have a centrally created calendar table that everyone within the business can use? If not, would you be interested in creating one? Let me know in the comments below along with any other questions you have about data flows. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you liked this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials, like these ones about me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.